Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you might have seen part 1 of this repair, where we revived an old analog XY recorder from HP. After replacing a faulty capacitor, it started to work again, but close inspection revealed that the trace was wiggly. We also learned that it uses a photo chopper inside, implemented with neon tubes and photoresistors. Ah, the good old 1960s technology. To summarize, a chopper amp eliminates the offset from a near DC operational amplifier by chopping the input signal into AC and unchopping it back to DC again at the output. But R seems to have issues. One of the photoresistors has a weak signal, and to make matters worse, one of the neon tubes quit while we were investigating it. Maybe this has to do with our wiggle problem. Or maybe not. Let's find out. Okay, so we definitely found what the weak link is in the X amplifier. This is a good photo chopper. You see how big the signal is? And this is a bad one. One has hardly any signal. And that's the one that's aligned with the lazy edge. And if you look at it, the tube appears clear and there's light coming right through. There we go. So that's that's not the neon, unlikely. It could be this, it could be that the uh, JFET it shoots into has some leakage. That could be true too. So this is actually a super simple construction. It's a piece of transparent plastic. It has a hole on what, at one end that goes over the neon tube and another place at the other end where you can put the, the photoresistor. So what I'll do is I'll swap the two photoresistors and see if the, the, the fault moves with it. And that would confirm that it's the photoresistor fault and not one of the FETs. Okay, so I swapped the two and the f not only the, the fault has moved with the uh, photoresistor, it's still the weak signal, but my I killed my uh, neon bulb on the other one. So now I have two faults. Great. All right, so now I have to find a f what component that is. The photoresistor is 1990-0072, and it's a photoconductor. I uh, could find no cross-reference, but I have it in my microfiche. It says HP01 5082-4606. So I guess that's an HP part. And the commercial number would be 5082-4606. Except when I look for that, I am getting a seven segment display. So we are not making much progress here. And of course the neon bulb is special and it's 2140047 neon lamp 0.8 milliamps and of course guess what I have it on another fish uh, it's uh, right at the bottom strike of 135 volts 0.8 milliamp half an inch tall and it's an A1C lamp to which I go in my neon lamp book which I found over the internet and it's on the table at the top it's indeed a T2 bulb half inch long and there it is 135 volt strike here it says 1.2 milliamp it's instead of 0.8 yeah it's 1.2 milliamp with 47k but they put 100k so they have much less than that it's the correct length it's a wire bulb and i look at 486 it means uh, it has a radioactive material in it so it strikes in the dark and it's a special high brightness uh, light great now i have to find that thing all right found them all on digikey the a1c is available uh, I'll change all the 100 microfarad caps since one died. And the, uh, this, the cadmium sulfide detector 
uh, they are rare because you have to take one that's sensitive to orange so it's the NSL7910 is the modern equivalent and it's on back order so god knows when I'll get it but I, I, I tried another one on eBay see if it has the the right sensitivity by any chance much much later okay let's see if we can climb out of our hole thanks to a new part so I've received the correct capacitors I replaced all of them the uh, neon bulbs A1C that's still made I had trouble with the uh, photo resistor and it looked good but it's not the right diameter and it's way too big and I have a 9mm one coming from eBay, but I can't guarantee that it will be the right wavelength. A few minutes later. Okay, so we're doing better. I have the nice caps now. No more dodgy repair. Uh, my neon works fine. And I'm back into the configuration where the good one is at its original place with the original neon. And the bad uh, photoresistor is with the new neon. And the original set up that works fine I have a nice big signal out of the photo chopper and the other one is weak so this is about half the signal it should have so i finally found a photo resistor to replace what i think is my weak one in the plotter but uh, when I replaced it, it didn't quite work and I was puzzled a bit uh, because as far as sensitivity was concerned, it was better than the original. So then I decided to get to the bottom of it and made that magnificent test setup. And I can put the uh, photoresistor and test it. So that's the good photoresistor. And you can see over there it's showing photoresistor action uh, so it's better if I put a cap to block the light and you see it's super good it's in the same circuit that's in the plotter it, it drives 100 kilo ohms and you can see it's pretty good this is 10 Hertz good response if I go to 60 Hertz it's starts to be a little short doesn't go all the way to zero uh, but still a good signal let's take the weak one okay it's pretty weak but if i put the cap on it you see that the weak one gives me half the signal which is the problem however it's not because it's that weak it's because it's slow so if i go to much lower speed it's fine so it's just that it's somehow gotten too slow if I now try the new one which is way more sensitive it's way higher in signal but when I put the cap on it it doesn't go any down it will only go down if I go very, very, very slow, so finally it gets there. So it's more sensitive, but at the expense of speed. So when I put that one in the circuit at 60 Hertz, it, it was way too slow. If you look at this one, I think this is specialty made. See how much smaller the, de the detection zone is, if it wants to focus on it. And I haven't found any device that's as small as this guy and in, in a TO can package. So I guess I'll remount this for now and just live with it uh, until I find a, a detector that's uh, both sensitive and small. Moments later. So Ken had the genius idea to swap the two amplifiers and see if the fault would move to the other side uh, so let me try to do this i have the x on the y amplifier and that's jerky so i can uh, control the x by the y yeah so it seems to be not the amplifier 
So it's mechanical, but man, I don't know what else to do. So I think I finally got it. It's now running much smoother. And it turns out it was a combination of this gear backlash adjustment that was too tight and the adjustment of this which was too loose and both are really tricky you have to make three adjustments one is over here you loosen this and then you can turn this gear which is eccentric and will move it closer or farther from the next gear and that's the backlash and that's the one that was the most off it was way too tight and uh, then you adjust the tension similarly by rotating the motor that's the one where you get it to 25 ounces so that got me to where it started to move smoothly without making noise I basically adjusted it for minimum noise and this guy was still rattling a bit and the way to adjust it is to move it all the way to the back and here is quite hidden there is a slot and if you put your screwdriver in the slot you can access a screw right here which vary the tension between the carrier and the rod and that was, was way too loose so that was causing it to vibrate and then once you get all of that the x-axis started to be really smooth and I had to do the same thing for the y-axis there's also an adjustment which is even more hidden so you have to bring it over here you bring the carriage and here there's a screw that's hidden that allows you to uh, do the same pinion adjustment for backlash as for this gear but for the little gear that's uh, for the x-axis. It has the same problem. It was too tight for some reason, which is rare usually when you get old thing It's too loose. But this one's too tight and then uh, Similarly you adjust it for minimum amount of noise And there was yet one more hidden adjustment for the y-axis ball bearing play This one is adjustable with a super small hex wrench via two access holes at the very top and the very bottom of the slide. Quite tricky. I would have never found it if I didn't have the manual. Yeah, and I think I have it pretty good when it's not vibrating at all. Very smooth. Pan down. There you go. No more wiggles. So it was mostly mechanical in the end, although at some point I would like to change the bad photoresistor, which affects the overall gain of the X amplifier and therefore forces me to adjust it to either increase the noise or reduce the torque on the X axis. And there is one more thing I wanted to show. The plotter came with a little add-on time module that provides a time base for the X axis. That's something that was part of the more expensive Mosley 135, but was optional on the HP7035. It was powered by this huge mercury battery, 12 volt mercury battery, so I, I made a little adapter for modern lithium in it. So let's try to make it work. 5 seconds per inch. On the Y I have a nice um, sine wave. Let's just sweep and get the pen down and there you go you could get a nice trace of any signal you wanted and for the grand finale I made a little box with two multi-turn pots and a switch and a few resistors and you guess what it's going to do it's going to turn this into a giant etch-a-sketch I call it a Hewlett sketch and it takes advantage of the port at the back okay, to be able to etch a sketch 
So fair warning, I'm not good at etch -a sketch at all. So this one has one up on etch -a sketch is that you can uh, put the pen up and down. Let's see. Down. Ta-da! Hewlett sketch with the 7035B. And I eventually used it as I originally wanted to, to plot my filter curves, but that's another story. And it can also be used in the ASMR mode. And I will see you in the next episode.